Our next case is also out of Texas and very disturbing because it involves a hospital nurse accused of deliberately killing patients in his care. It's it's just so disturbing. Um, this Texas nurse is accused of killing four patients with something called air injections. 37-year-old William Davis has been found guilty of four counts of capital murder for killing four patients who were all recovering from heart surgery. And, and the manner of death was to inject air into the arteries, which then caused and mimicked uh, symptoms that were kind of stroke-like but ultimately mm. led to the to the premature death of these patients. Prosecutors are asking for the death penalty. William Davis is accused of injecting those air bubbles into the arteries of patients during 2017 and 2018. It happened at a hospital in Tyler, Texas, which is about an hour and a half east of Dallas. The four victims, all men, died suffering from something called unexplained neurological problems. It's, you know, it's a catch-all. As we know, mm -hmm. uh, medicine is not a perfect science, even with diagnoses. So that is how it was listed. A pulmonologist testified in this case about how when you inject an air bubble into the arterial brain system, it causes brain injury and then death. And it was through brain scans that they were able to figure out what the injury was. Now, Davis's attorney claims that Davis is the scapegoat here and was charged because Davis happened to be on duty each time. Okay, well, happened to be on duty each time, but true. I mean, there are a lot of nurses rotating. I, I get that. Um, anyway, the prosecutor didn't buy it. The prosecutor said that the nurse actually enjoyed doing this. Judy, what's, what's your thought here? Because this is a very bizarre way to kill someone. Yeah, you, know? you know, I think that at first glance, Anna, it would cause most people to think you committed to a career of taking care of people, getting them back to health, and you're a serial killer? That doesn't make any sense. But actually, the weird thing and the sad thing is many serial killers adopt roles that get them access an opportunity to kill as many people as possible. And there has been historically a whole slew of doctors and nurses and caregivers who use their specific role where people are off their guard. Sometimes they're not even conscious, right? They're in these weakened states and that's how they essentially get all of their murders in. They, they use that access, that special privilege and their special knowledge of medicine to pull something off like this and essentially have it be somewhat undiscoverable for a long time. And this is why it took a little while for the investigation to unfold. Wait a minute here, there's a pattern, but it wasn't so obvious from the beginning. And that's all due to the fact that only certain individuals in the medical community could really step forward and say, this is what happens when you inject air, right? Mm -hmm. We wouldn't necessarily know that as lay people, right? But if you're in the medical field, that is something that you do find out over time. And let's face it, you know, uh, when you're a heart patient, every every one of these patients had had heart surgery. You know, right. that's there's an inherent risk in that. You're already ill or you wouldn't be having this heart surgery. So sadly, sometimes there are fatalities and people don't make it. So I, I agree that that's another reason why it wouldn't be flagged immediately. It's Right. horrific it's tragic but i'm sure every patient and their family was told you know this is risky there's always a risk right, right. there's always a risk That's with right. surgery so this is the other thing that i find interesting and this is part of the evidence the tyler morning telegraph newspaper reports that security footage recorded davis going into one of the victim's hospital rooms before the patient exhibited problems mm -hmm. and here's when i think everything starts lining up the nurse said that he went into the hospital room because the IV pump was going off, that the alarm was sounding. But prosecutors said that hospital records indicated that the alarm did not ring. So there wouldn't have been mm. any reason to be in the room. So that was the beginning of it. And apparently, here's the other thing that prosecutors made very clear to the jury, that when the patient started failing and dying, Davis 
one of the nurses was not involved in the attempted reviving of the patient. Isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Davis was there, could have definitely tried it or attempted to save this person's life and eh, just kind of stood by and watched the person suffer until he died. What do you make of that, Judy? Because, you know, I would say if you're trying to cover your tracks, you jump in there and try and save the patient. Right. And I think that unfortunately with some serial killers, they are so motivated and so essentially um addicted to that feeling of seeing somebody die and feeling like that's a powerful experience and sadly enjoying seeing someone suffer that he may have not able to help himself and actually think about self-preservation at that moment it was just essentially getting off on the experience i don't i i, I wish i had a better way to put it but when you think about these serial killers, when you hear their confessionals, they admit that they like seeing that, especially like they like seeing the suffering up close, that it makes them feel powerful, like they're God. Um, and it revives them. This essentially brings them excitement and joy in their life, which is really scary. Oh, that is frightening. Although in this case, uh, the nurse, Davis, has claimed the entire time that he is innocent and his attorney mm. has said that he was a scapegoat for other problems and that it was the hospital really ultimately responsible for the deaths of these patients. Now, one patient after this incident suffered so terribly, suffered for two years before dying. Oh. That is just, her. I mean, it's just horrific. I mean, it's all, no matter what, it's horrific, whether you die instantly or you die over a grueling two year period, it is tragic for the individual and the family and friends of these patients. But gosh, that just sounds horrible. Mm. Now, Davis was initially fired from the hospital in February of 2018. And the reasons given were, quote, falsifying care events and unethical practice. Mm -hmm. So it sounds in this case that the hospital was doing an investigation themselves. And I know that a lot of people sometimes are very critical of hospitals and, and medical institutions because they always feel that in many cases, if there is wrongdoing, the hospitals are always trying to cover up. And in this case seems that the hospital was part of the investigation and trying to get this person arrested and convicted and now faces the death penalty or could face the death, is eligible for the death penalty. We'll have to wait on sentencing. Right. Right. And I'm glad that the hospital did their own investigation, didn't necessarily wait um, for the legal system to kick in and knew that they had a duty to protect their other patients and, and even their staff. I mean, who knows how far this would have gone if Davis continued to be employed there, he has access to everybody's items, information, personal history, right? Just by virtue of being an employee there. So we don't know how far this could have gone. Um, the four deaths were extremely tragic, but imagine if the hospital didn't make a stance, um, how many more people could be dead today? Mm -hmm. So tragic, so tragic. 